hi yet another important concept related to oscillators the deriving the expression for frequency of oscillations of a colpitt's oscillator it will be easier uh, to obtain the obtain the derivation for frequency of oscillations if you know the general expression for lc oscillators i have already done that one that video i'll provide you the link in the description box please go through that so if you don't have an idea on the general expression for lc oscillators you will find it tough uh, what is the change with, what what is the change in lc oscillators generally we have that classification lc oscillators and we have uh, colpitts and hartley as a classification lc oscillators so guys this is in common r1 and uh, <coughs> providing biasing and to provide the required operating point something like that rfc coil instead of rc we will be having rfc radio frequency coil to um, there will be a need in communication we need to have maximum transfer of power to the load this is the load and so we need that one um, rc resistance is substituted with rfc radio frequency coil inductor simply and uh, we have this combination as it is uh, re and uh, bypass capacitor ce with a plus vcc this is this is common for uh, all the oscillator circuits okay and uh, <clears throat> as far as uh, this is the point at which we collect the v naught and uh, we have uh, we have now focus more we have uh, z1 we have z2 okay we have z1 z2 and we have z3 over here by changing the impedances impedance combination that will be taking um, the LC oscillators in general will take the form Hartley oscillator or a Colpitts and now here from here it's given back to the input and uh, a ground over here <coughs> ground over here okay so this is the connection and V naught is taken over here so by substituting um, what comes for a for a Colpitts oscillator what will be what component will be acting as Z1 and Z2 guys it's a a capacitors two capacitors over here giving the name <coughs> c1 and c2 c1 and c2 and now we will be having an inductor with the inductance l right so guys this one this will be now z1 is z1 will be the impedance offered by the capacitor c1 so that will be 1 by j omega c1 and what is z2 z2 will be the impedance offered by the capacitor c2 so that will be 1 by j omega c2 and z3 impedance offered by the inductor l which is equal to j omega l so simply by substituting this one in the general expression for lc oscillators that will give us the frequency of oscillations and the condition for sustained oscillations so what is the general expression guys remember this is already derived okay so don't start from here uh, suggested not to go straight away to lc oscillators it will be easier for a beginner for a student to understand that this derivation if uh, you have a previous knowledge on general expression for lc oscillators so how that looks what is that expression it's a h i e into uh, crow brackets it's a z1 plus z2 plus z3 close the bracket and what do we have plus 1 plus hfe into z1 z2 plus z1 z3 equal to 0 this is the general expression for lc oscillators i've done it please go through the previous video and here just substituting the values of z1 z2 z3 and separating the main concept separating the real terms on one half and uh, real um, imaginary terms that will give us with equating to zero will give us those equations which we are in search of right so hi as it is as hi and what comes in place of z1 this comes away one by j omega c1 plus z2 this is 1 by j omega c2 plus z3 
uh, it's a j omega l j omega l okay close the bracket this is for hie hie multiplied with z1 plus z2 plus z3 plus 1 plus hfe multiplied with um, z1 it's a 1 by j omega c1 multiplied with 1 by j omega c2 don't get confused over here it's z1 into z2 okay so plus um, z1 z3 z1 and z3 z1 multiplied with z3 1 by j omega c1 into j omega l which is equal to 0 right so guys uh, a small simplification here itself in the expression general expression um, a small modification here itself what is that modification guys um, uh, this j taken up to the numerator that will be minus j okay this j how that comes into the picture okay we had j isn't it uh, numerator and denominator multiplied with j like uh, j by j so this okay we have this j and this will be minus 1 so how can that be written so this as this can be written like minus of j even this one even this one like it's no more plus it's minus j and this one okay and here here itself this this term is multiplied with this is getting multiplied with this and uh, these two terms are multiplied okay so j into j j square that's a negative one here it's a j into j right j into j minus one and that negative comes over here that negative comes over here please follow the modifications here itself and uh, these two are getting multiplied so it will be omega square it's uh, you know writing it as one term it will be 1 by omega square c1 into c2 right and here uh, this j omega in the denominator j omega in the numerator gets cancelled and we don't have this anymore please make a note of this one so that term what we have over here is um, l by c1 okay so this is the one and here we don't have any imaginary this comes this is the real part of the expression and this is imaginary so equating this equal to zero like uh, equating the like terms on either side of the equation like we don't have any um, imaginary or real or on the RHS so this expression will be equal to 0 and guys HIE of a transistor is never 0 it's insane like we don't have a transistor with HIE equal to 0 we need to have some value right HIE the input resistance being the input resistance of a transistor is never 0 so this one this should be equal to 0 okay so what is that um, it's a uh, now this one like uh, even this is more like this one so taking out j as common from this and this and this so j, write down the j over here so it will be 1 by 1 by this is the one okay now this entire expression will be equal to 0 in the sense or negative 1 by omega c1 minus 1 by omega c2 plus omega l which is equal to 0 okay so this is the one and from this very expression shifting this entire negatives to rhs that will be positive and we'll be having omega l which is equal to 1 by omega c1 plus 1 by omega c2 we don't need this and remember it's we have a negative over here and here so omega l which is equal to i uh, simplifying this one omega c1 into omega c2 multiplied okay and definitely we'll have to simplifying we'll have to cross multiply this isn't it this has to be cross multiplied so that will give us omega c1 plus omega c2 
okay so still which is omega as common now let me write down omega into c1 plus c2 by this one omega square omega square c1 c2 which is equal to <coughs> omega l right so this omega in the in the numerator and this in the denominator gets cancelled here we don't have this anymore we don't have this anymore okay and uh, a small modification this omega will be equal to omega square which is equal to um, c1 plus c2 upon um, l times c1 c2 okay so this is this is an important equation uh, we'll have to substitute over here to evaluate the condition for sustained oscillation remember this one this has to be considered again so we have we need omega where we have the term frequency right so that will be under root root on either side c1 plus c2 by l times c1 c2 okay and uh, omega that itself is 2 pi f 2 pi f and we are in search of this f by 2 pi 1 by 2 pi so guys this is expression for frequency of oscillations of a uh, colpitts oscillator 1 by 2 pi under root this one this is not all this is not all we have to um, evaluate the value of hfe to produce sustained oscillations now what is sustained oscillation guys if uh, we we have no independence of taking whatever value of capacitors and uh, resistors and yeah what is that capacitor and inductor and uh, transistor hfe value whatever we want no in order to have sustained oscillations uh, there is some condition to be met or else uh, that the oscillator cannot produce sustained oscillations it may it may damp out we want this one we want this uh, constant amplitude but if no proper selection is done, um, the output may damp out after some time. That would be no. This is not needed. We want. We need to have an oscillator which can produce this one. So for that reason, uh, we have to. We don't. We cannot go for whatever value of uh, HFE of the transistor. There is some condition with that. Now this one equal to zero. Now this one equal to zero. Here it's a it's a positive, isn't it? This one and uh, uh, this will be equal to this right and how can that be written guys it's a uh, 1 plus hfe into um, 1 by omega square c1 c2 as it is which will be equal to l by c1 okay l by c1 and uh, uh, what is omega square over here watch this carefully omega square that omega square which is over here um, what is that it's a 1 plus hfe into 1 by so omega square is this one so substituting with uh, omega square equal to what is that in the denominator isn't it so c1 plus c2 divided by this that goes up okay oh, l because that is coming in the denominator isn't it this flips up so l c1 c2 into c1 c2 which is equal to l by c1 okay so guys uh, a small simplification over here what it is is uh, this uh, we don't have this anymore and we don't have this also anymore so one plus here with the blue don't get confused okay uh, 1 plus hfe is equal to um, this goes this flips up isn't it c1 plus c2 divided by c1 and uh, this one this c1 by c1 plus this c2 by c1 so this is one we have this one and uh, one on either side gets cancelled and the value that to produce sustained oscillations to produce sustained oscillations we have to select a transistor uh, whose hfe value is equal to c2 by c1 
capacitances. This is the con this is the condition for sustained oscillation, and this is the expression for frequency of oscillations of a Colpitt's oscillator. Thanks for watching.